Hello, everybody. Welcome to another stream with Offensive Security. My name is Siren. I'm a content developer for Offensive Security and an educator and a streamer. If you are viewing this on YouTube, thank you. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, feel free to jump ahead to the 30 minute mark. That's when we'll actually begin the machine. This stream was recorded on twitch.tv and uh, on February 18th. And we're just gonna go ahead and take some questions from the community, let people trickle in uh, and kind of just get situated before we begin the machine. Of which today's machine is DC4, that's Delta Charlie 4. And I hope you enjoy it. I've gone ahead and posted the link to this stream, the twitch.tv link in the Wireside text channel. If you're unfamiliar, we use that kind of little nook and cranny of Discord for all things that are uh, either office hours related with our chats with various guests to take questions from the community in a very hands-on session. Um, that's every Friday as well. We had one earlier today, which was great. Um, we had a special guest on, his name is Robert, and he's one of our penetration testers here at Offensive Security. So shout outs to Robert, and thank you very much, Rob, for uh, doing that there and taking the questions from the community. And I see we have our first chat from Comprook, if I pronounce this correctly. Comprom Compromat, Compromat says, hi there and good afternoon. Welcome, my friend. Um, we're just gonna let everybody kind of sit down Happy Friday um, to everybody here, and looking forward to the weekend. Hopefully you can go into the weekend with me, or with us, and uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and grab the link on Vulnhub for DC4, and that way you can kind of just get it imported into VirtualBox or your virtual software, though it is an OVA file, so that should import natively into VirtualBox just fine. Um, let me grab that for you real quick. And I've gone ahead and posted that into the chat. Uh, first time chat from Kesda. They say hype. Hype indeed, my friend. We're going to rock this machine today. There will be no mercy. So hopefully you enjoy and uh, tune in. I see the viewer count is starting to trickle up. Welcome to everybody. Uh, don't be afraid to type in the chat, even if you are unfamiliar. Uh, with what we do here at Offensive Security, feel free to step in for maybe the next hour and 30 minutes, hour and 45, and get an idea for what uh, intrusion takes, you know, what, what forms intrusion can take. Um, I'm very particularly uh, excited about today's machine, Delta Charlie 4. Um, it's part of the DC series. There are about nine machines. Welcome, Nicholas Jr., or Nicholas, Nicholas Jar, says, hello, everybody. Well, hello, Nicholas. We're glad to have you, and welcome on board, my friend. Jester, welcome back, buddy, says, happy Friday, happy Siren Day. <laughs> I have Friday all of a sudden. 
DTH, of course, my friend. Welcome back, DTH. It's good to see you. It says, hi, 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 Siren. We got Swagger Hacker. Welcome back, Swagger. And B. Blanco just subscribed with Prime. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, B. Blanco. You should... I'm not very familiar with how Prime works on Twitch. You'd figure somebody that was as technical as me might know, but the truth of the matter is I personally do not participate in social media very often um, unless it is directly to educate, inform, and inspire others. Um, but nonetheless, thank you for the subscription, I guess, is what I'm supposed to say. So thank you. And uh, Rang Flexus says, hi, everyone. Welcome, Rang. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So basically, guys, we're going to be doing DC4. I just hope that you have time to get it all. I, I'd received a little bit of feedback that people were having issues um, getting it up on their network in time, even with 20 minutes. Uh, so that is my fault. I'll maybe start 30 minutes ahead of time and give people a little extra time to um, get the virtual machine imported, tossed up on their network, and... Uh, Make sure they get that in-map scan down of their private IP space and uh, find out where it is, export the IP address, and you'll be ready to go with me. Um, Sunil is a first-time chatter. Sunil44P, that's 44 Papa. Welcome, Sunil. Welcome, welcome. Zero X Graham, welcome back. I'm very much a regular. Seeing some regulars today. Uh... Dragon, 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 welcome, says hello, hello, Siren, well, hello, Dragon, and welcome, my friend. First time chat from GamerSushi1337 saying hello, everybody's trickling in. If you are unfamiliar with offensive security or intrusion techniques um, and intrusion methodologies, uh, computer science or computer security, I advise you just to kind of kick back, relax for the next hour and 30, hour and 45 minutes. And, uh, you know, just kind of follow along. Maybe you get something from it. Maybe it inspires you. Maybe you see something that you didn't see before inside yourself. I know that's the case. Uh, that was the case with me many, many, many years ago when I first heard the voice of uh, one Mati or Mutz. And uh, he had a very soothing voice. And I was like, man, this stuff is pretty cool. You know, pretty cool. It doesn't have to be all foreign and crazy, you know? So thank you guys very much for being here. First time chats all over the place. Uh, first time from Mifta Hall says hello or hi. Welcome, Mifta. Hope to see you as a regular, my friend. We do this every Friday. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard um, is when we actually begin. For anybody watching this over YouTube, just skip ahead to the 30-minute mark. It's no problem. Just skip ahead and... You'll be ready to follow the machine along with us as the community cultivates attack vectors and uh, we bring it to its knees. XX Unknown, welcome back, another regular. Welcome, XX Unknown. Barry Duina, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday indeed, my friend. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Um, I have a new setup for my microphone. I know it seems like I change my microphone settings every week. Um, and that's partly because I do. This time I have a pop filter, aka a sock, over my microphone, and I was just curious if I could get some feedback on if it sounds good, if it sounds bad, if it's too loud, if it's too soft. It's very clear, says Swagger Hacker. Awesome. That is what I like to hear. Um, I hear it's even better than last week. Great. What color is the sock? Um, it's from my top drawer. It's like a striped sock. I don't really wear these out. I maybe wear them uh, like as pajama socks or something, but I'm like, well, I have a better use for that, uh, more clever use. I can use it as a pop filter, and it seems to be working quite well. So we have Zero X Grim. What box is today? That's Delta Charlie 4 DC4. DC4 is the name of the machine. I will go ahead and paste the link into the chat. If you'd like to, just go ahead and copy that, including the comma 313 followed by the forward slash. Go ahead and click the mirror button to download it or the standard download button. It should download just fine. Put it in a VirtualBox VMs folder, double click it, open it in VirtualBox, go to the network settings, set the network to bridged adapter for your first time around, should work just fine. 
Make sure you don't leave a vulnerable machine up on your, even on your uh, little quiet internal network for too long because it is an intentionally vulnerable machine. Just a little bit of healthy security practice there, only during the testing periods. That way we can minimize surface on our own networks. Um, but dirt for the sake of this stream, absolutely. Uh, get it on up there. We're going to hack it. We're going to have fun. It's going to be fine. Um, we have 0Y, 0PH. <laughs> I, some of these names I borderline give up on. Hacker aliases are tough. They have always been tough, these hacker aliases. Um, Oyafant. Oyafant. A yofant. <laughs> Even Siren is struggling with some of these names, so I do apologize if I if I brutalize your name. Really, I don't mean it in any personal way. Um, I do my best here. So let's see, we are up to about 40 people. If you'd like to go ahead and launch the machine, uh, scan down your private network, grab the IP address, export the IP address in your terminal as an environment variable, and get it up and loaded into Cherry Tree or your Markdown, whatever it might be, you are free to go. That is going to be our target machine today. We've got it in our sights, we've clocked in the scopes, and everything is ready to go. We're just going to take a little bit of time to get some questions from, maybe technical questions from uh, the community. I like to do this as a little padding, a little buffer room coming out of our uh, questions that are geared towards multiple people that do many things at offensive security. And uh, yeah, if you have any other miscellaneous questions, I like to give this 20 to 30 minute window just to allow people to do that. Shadow Master, first time chatter, Shadow Master 666, Mark of the Beast, Timothy, Oyafant, I'm not sure what that is, um, but that might be the reference. B. Blanco, welcome back, my regular friend. How do you spec your Cali VM? Um, to tell you the truth, I like to uh, kind of have a private server um, that has everything loaded on it, kind of like a private web server with heavily obfuscated URIs that rotate. And then I'll pull everything down uh, in a bash script every time I launch a new instance of Kali or update Kali. And that way everything is kind of up to date and uh, so on and so forth. I know TJ Null does it a little bit differently. Honestly, to me, I just need to update my bash RC, make sure all of my old pre-compiled Windows payloads are already in, you know, ready for transfer, and that my system is weaponized uh, to the fullest extent, as sharp as the sword can be, and ready to go. Um, Spicy419 says, LOL, yes. Here for the swag, do you offer uh, handle suggestion services? That is to say, you're asking if I offer uh, alias suggestions. Um, I certainly do. Um, I didn't ever in my wildest dreams in my entire life ever think I'd be offering that kind of service. Um, but uh, yeah, because it's really hard to do for somebody else because you don't know who they are, right? And a hacker, I'm sorry, my cats, hey guys, be nice, be nice. Sorry, I have two cats and they're playing, as you guys know, but it's really difficult to come up with a hacker alias, like in that film Hackers, for somebody else, because the truth is, it's a personal thing. You know, it, every, every name means something to someone, and it has a story. Okay. I apologize. Um, my cats like to jump around and play across all of my furniture, and I fear in the next year or so I will have to <laughs> buy new furniture, but that is okay. Um, yeah, exactly. Cat's gonna cat. I just try to keep the audio clean. Nevertheless, um, I mean, it's, it's true um, that every hacker alias is gonna definitely be different, right? And everyone has like kind of a personal, um, a personal connotation to their handle or to their alias. 
So I'd love to suggest one for you, man, but I just say dig deep. Dig deep, find, you know, a person, a place, a thing, a who, a what, a where, a when, a why, and apply it to your name and, you know, see how things go. All right, yeah, cat's going to be cats. I totally agree. Nonetheless, first time chat from Come on Tal Talvan X says hello. Welcome, Come on Talvan X. Glad to have you. King Zeldris says, I'll make Falcon Spy 2. I forgot to say welcome, Falcon Spy. Thank you so much for modding the chat here today. Uh, yeah, just, just thank you very much. I see our viewership is ticking up. Let's take a look at the time. We have approximately 14 more minutes to go. That is 14 more minutes to go, and then we're going to start attacking this machine. If you have any actual questions, uh, please feel free to ask. <laughs> Here for the swag says you could create a survey and offer paid Q and A one on one conversation to find the perfect handle. I might have to start up a side hustle. You know what, man? I'm not gonna tell. I'm not gonna hold you back. I'm gonna say go for it. If you see an opportunity, go for it. One-on-one uh, -on -one consultation to make your hacker alias. Personalized and awesome. Mine is anti-poon because I can't get shell. Well, you know what? You're in the right place. We can certainly fix that issue uh, and make sure that you are the shell getter, so to speak. Uh... B. Blanco says, re on your Kali setup, do you have a KB on that config or know of something similar? I do not. I do not. Uh, realistically, I should probably, I'm outdated. I'm old school with how I update my machines. I'm just like mad old school. I use a bash script. I transfer that. I use a bash script. It pulls everything. It installs everything. Kind of like a Docker, like what a modern day thing would be like a Docker, right? Like a Docker file. Um... Uh, something very similar to that. I just load everything on, reset before each engagement, and uh, rock and roll. But how about the Mattel <laughs> Falcon Spy Kids 2? First, oh, Maticus is back. Welcome back, my friend Maticus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Always glad to have you. Spicy419, could you explain the why more than the how? I get lost during privilege escalation. Yeah, so... When I'm thinking of privilege escalation um, and why comes to mind, I know what a common forest will look like. I know what a common, you know, grid-like forest will look like. You know, those typical forests where they've cut it down and replanted the trees, carbon neutral. Think of those type of cookie cutter forests that you have to see put up. I know what a typical machine with the default installation for various distribution is gonna look like just from pure experience, right? And if I see something, you know, a tree that's in the middle of the grid as opposed to in line with the grid, I think to myself, man, you know, that stands out. Why is that there? What is it doing? Why, 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 why is that there? Um, so yeah, as a penetration tester, I do ask why all the time. I'll see something and I'll say, why is that there? And usually if I find out why it's there, it'll lead me to how I can utilize it for privilege escalation. I hope that helps answer your question. Uh, first time chat from a viewer, Opcop. Opcop says, hi, welcome Opcop. And here for the swag, what are your first installs, post install items when moving into a new workstation or VM? I get Terminator installed, right? I get my uh, terminal installed, coloring, everything all set up, fonts, monospace, get it all, you know, working clean. And then uh, I transfer over my Bash RC so that everything feels right at home. And uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, those are those are my... Every, Kali comes locked and loaded out of the gate if you get everything installed. So um, I... I those are, those are pretty much my first installs. Hello, first time viewer. So for, this is from Crossbow. It says, hello, first time viewer. Started offsec training a few months ago. Nice dude. Welcome on board. Still really, uh, still really new. 
but hoping to learn a lot through this experience, excited to stop in and view it as well. Welcome aboard, my friend. We do this every Friday. The kickoff is at 5 p.m. Eastern. Sometimes I usually almost always start 20 to 30 minutes early just to allow people to trickle in for this very reason. Um, <clears throat> King Zeldris says, we'll try to type in chat more often or just ask questions that chat can explain. Uh, this is Gloom. Why and how questions will get you very far. I agree, my friend. I, have, I very much agree with that sentiment and with that regard. Uh, asking why uh, in this field is not going to hurt you. Because when you ask why, you know, why does this payload work? Why does, you know, this character work for command injection or whatever it might be, man, anything? Uh, why does it work? It, it inquires that you delve into more advanced computer science concepts, right? If you ask the why question, you're going to delve into more advanced computer science questions. And as a resultant, you're going to start thinking about how it all applies to computer security, web applications, infrastructure, wireless, you know, uh, my God, binary exploitation. Your mind starts, it's like confetti. It just blows up and, and you see how cool security can really be. Um, you gotta ask why, man. I will never tell anybody not to ask why. Please ask why. Uh, any tips on keeping track of exploit modification for penetration test reporting, i.e. different highlighting? Um, yeah, use the standard color codes. So I believe for informational, it's like a, a gray. Uh, a low finding is gonna be kind of like, what was it? For, this is just from memory, uh, uh, like a light blue right or even was it a green something like that a moderate finding will generally bring you in um, at around an orange color a high finding will be very much a strong red and a critical count will be like kind of like a hot pink hot pinkish red color um, and that's generally the schema for your formal report uh, when you want to include in the executive summary you know total number of findings and the the scope of the findings, you know, from informational all the way through critical. So if that, I hope that's the right answer to your question. Any tips on that? Any tips on improving my understanding of course code? I understand basics like what a variable is. I can identify functions and some things are easy to understand, but other times I get lost. Hmm. Uh, which course? Maybe I can answer you better if you tell me which course. Are you taking the OSWA, OSCPs, SOC, our SOC course? Uh, which course, if you could specify, I might be able to help you. Um, just got to know which course. Uh, some people say, you know, get the Python crash course book. I've never done that. I kind of just refer to the documentation whenever I need to use a programming language, signed up for the OSCP. So yeah, if you're struggling a little bit with your programming abilities, um, asking the why question when seeing scripts that were left behind, you know, on a server by a developer or something like that, and, you know, maybe checking them out locally, looking into the types of things that are being tossed around on a network. Um, it is, it is, a lot. There's a reason that the Offensive Security Certified Professional Certification is the best cybersecurity certification in the world. And the reason for that, not only is that it's performance-based, but it will force the student, regardless of what skill set they come in with, to learn new things, to do their research, to hit up Google, and get down to brass tacks and start learning a little more programming and a little bit more Linux systems administration, you know, learning a little bit more about uh, configurations and so on and so forth. Um, these types of things are what we force, you know, well, we don't force it, but we encourage with our try harder mindset to delve deeper into CompuSci and CompuSec. Um, but yeah. I, I hope that answers your question, my friend. So yeah, finding your flow 
Oyo Oyofen says, yeah, finding your flow, find your zone, put on some chill music, man. Absolutely. Um, and just kind of sit back, relax, and take it little by little. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. I mean, I was super happy, exhilarated when I passed my OSCP, and I went out and treated myself to a nice lunch. Um, I'll never forget that day for the rest of my life. That's how much it meant to me. And I realized, though, that after that, it wasn't just the job search. It was all of the technicalities involved, and um, it was more or less... <sighs> It was more or less realizing that, you know, this certification, it, I can only speak from personal experience. Allow me to preface what I'm about to say. This is personal experience. This certification is a little bit like, to me, like a life commitment um, because it teaches these such core aspects of intrusion techniques that have gone on for decades um, and still exist in modern weaponized code today. Um, and these are core concepts that you're going to find in the field and in your career. You know, it's not a one-time job. This is a career. And um, yeah, that's why I say, man, don't sprint through it. Please, you know, take it at your own pace, relax, but realize that there are a lot of technical things that you're not going to understand until you make an effort to understand what's going on. It is going to require effort, though. Um, we'll try and guide you as much as we can along the way, uh, as much, at every corner. Um, it just gets annoying, uh, Xloji says, it just gets annoying when I want to understand exploit code and the like, because you don't want to run something you can't understand, you know? Um... Yeah, no, I get that. For security reasons, why would you ever want to run especially weaponized code, malicious code? Well, there's a difference I want to say between weaponized code and malicious code. Malicious code is sneaky. And, you know, I think backdoor, you know, that comes to mind. Or code that gets snuck into a source code. Uh, it, it teeters on the malicious side of morals and morales. Uh, whereas weaponized code, like we have on the entire exploit database, is all verified by our staff at Offensive Security 24-7 to make sure that there is no malicious code in these payloads, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, understanding the language, you'll learn which things to look for once you understand uh, how we hack and how we intrude, dude. So let's see. Comp... Pew, pew, pew. Compromat says, in view of OSCP, giving more weight to Active Directory as of recent, any chance this type of machine can be scheduled in the near future? Disclaimer, I, you know, I've, I've um, thought about it. I have no problem uh, going over an AD machine. Um, or I, I would go over AD all day. Like, if it was, if, if, if I could, <laughs> I would. Uh, is, is the way it stands. If I could, I would. Um, but there are so many resources out there, guys. I mean, I'm here, you know, to take you by the hand and kind of lead you down a right road. Um, the road that OSSEC led me down. That's the best thing I can do. Offensive security took me once upon a time and they walked me down a road. And I'm hoping that I can walk you guys down that same road. And that road did encourage uh, self-discovery and looking into things and understanding, you know, server message blocks, Samba, how that plays into AD and what common internet file structure actually is. Um, these types of things are very important to learn. These protocols, these packets just sent over the network, analyze them, understand them. What's expected at this character position? What's expected at this character position? It's going to help you a lot. Welcome, my buddy, my friend, Al Hazred. It's good to have you to the channel, buddy. Uh, good to have you, good to have you, good to have you. Glad to see a friendly face. Al Hazred is also a very, very popular streamer um, and a good friend of mine. And uh, I hope nothing but the best. I <laughs> it reminds me of, I have nothing but the best for you. Was that Adele? I don't know. 
Uh, but nonetheless, let's take a look at the time. It is five on the dime. So we're gonna switch our source here. I'm going to echo out my IP. I'm going to export the URL to equal HTTP 192.168.1.160. We'll say on port 80 forward slash fuzz. And we are locked, we are loaded, and we are ready to go. I hope you guys are as well. Um, yeah, see here, like, absolutely. So I have the virtual machine just running here, right? It's tossed up on the network for anybody that's completely new to this. Um, and, uh, you know, you can scan down that fourth octet. It's DHCP assignment. And, uh, and that can, you know, set that as your target. But let's go ahead and get an nmap scan done. I'm going to scan all ports, 65,535-SC-SV. So simple scripts and a light little flick scan uh, on scripts, service version, if I can get a TCP connect, even a minimalist uh, connect, uh, that'd be good. And I'll demonstrate that with Netcat, how InMap kind of goes about getting this type of information. And then we'll, tar obviously our target right now, our victim machine is the target IP environment variable. This will be different for you. And we'll tack on dash dash open. Um, dash dash open will speed up this process here because we'll only be looking for open ports. Uh, but we'll go ahead and smash the return key and then we'll get that into cherry tree. Welcome JX Coke. Crow, Christy, Angel D, good, goodness gracious, three familiar faces back to back. It's good to see you here, guys. All right, so immediately 2020, 22 and port 80, SSH and the web, uh, very common theme because that's just the way it is. Um, but what we're going to do is hop over to Cherry Tree and under the nmap results, just paste it in. People want to know a little bit more about my aliases, how I move so quickly, how I'm so fast, and how I'm so accurate. I will do my best to, because it's been brought to my attention that that's the case, I will do my best uh, to give you the hotkeys, give you the profiles, and what I do. <coughs> so in Cherry Tree, I hit Shift-Alt-B, that's for background color, and I press Enter really quickly. You don't often see that window. Um, and then, because this was also asked today in the uh, office hours chat, to change the foreground color and highlight, shift alt F. That's all it is. Um, and then port 80, we start highlighting some services, some service version. How do I, you know, move around so quickly here? Well, I have the function key, right? Um, and the left and right arrows, that takes me on a line to the left or to the right. Shift and control will bring over like kind of in between dot statements, commas, spaces, that kind of thing. And that's how I move my cursor around so much with, well, without actually having to use my mouse. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're just, you know, highlighting a couple of things here. Our target is Debian, uh, double confirmation there. And it looks like we're pretty good. HTTP title is system tools. so. That's pretty suggestive to me off the bat. If we have system tools, I'm thinking, you know, dev. Uh, is this developer? Any OS level execution? Something like this. I mean, uh, before I even address you guys or we go down the normal lane, that's just what my mind sees. This will be second nature to you in time, I promise. But we're going to get the ports up here as always. 22 SSH, 80 HTTP. If we are getting into the machine, it is going to either be through one of these or through a combination of them, right? One of these or a combination. So let's take a look. I did promise about the netcat thing, the simple scripts or service version. Let's just do a netcat connection, a simple TCP connection, uh, dash net verbose. That means numerical. Um, I'm expecting a numerical IP as to some host name, right? numerical and you can even tack on triple verbose if you really like to the target IP and then the destination port in this case we'll say 80 and it says 80 looks like HTTP is open and I'll type something like options forward slash HTTP forward slash 1.0 and let's see what we get back right um, so just even with a bogus request we get uh, nginx 
uh, the same, and doesn't this look very similar to what we have here, if not exactly the same thing from our end map? Um, but yeah, I'm going to move SSH down to the bottom here. Uh, we don't have any users. We have no passwords. We have no credentials. It is at the bottom of our to try list. Um, but the moment that we get those credentials, we could be running Hydra in the background. Absolutely. Does Nmap handle separate switches versus combining them, SV, SC? It certainly does, yes. Um, all right, so what are we going to do? HTTP. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just copy the IP to my clipboard but and put up here that our target is Debian. Um, because the world runs on Debian, it feels like. And uh, yeah, so ADHTTP, what are we going to do here, guys? I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to do anything. I want you guys to tell me what I'm going to do. Manual enumeration, OK. I'm going to do that. Uh, Wfuzz, uh, you know, visiting the site, we'll call that manual derb. Uh, Nikto, um, and running nmap with dash dash vuln, I think that's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> that is kind of funny. Um, no need to use FFUF, I am an advocate for WFuzz. It's very complex and intricate, but if you learn the intricacies, it's infinitely powerful uh, with regards to the web. And uh, so let's get down to it, right? I'm going to echo out my target URL, you know, where was I? There I am. And I'm going to type common. Uh, and let's see here, wfuzz files. Now notice how I have no trailing forward slash here, right? I'm going to control shift V and we'll explain this across the board. wfuzz, I want color, that's what the dash Z is. Dash Z file input method is file. And we specify that as opt, seclist, discovery, web content, raft large files dot text. If you don't have that, there are a couple ways to get seclist. You can get that from the GitHub repository um, and just git clone it to the op directory. Or you can actually, we've included that in um, our repository recently. I got word that we actually just added it. Uh, app dash git and install dash yes um, seclist. And that'll put it in your user share directory. But nonetheless, uh, we're going to exclude 404s. And this is our target URL. So let's just hit the button on that. I'm going to export another URL to equal HTTP 192.168.1.160 on port 80 forward slash fuzz forward slash and close that out. I'm going to type common again. And we're going to load up the same exact command. The difference is that our payload here, our payload list, our word list is different. We have raft large directories, and I've added a trailing forward slash. Uh, still the same concept, don't want er erroneous responses, and we hit the return key and see what we get back. So already finding login.php, you know, thinking, my goodness, are we going to be doing SQLI, authentication bypass? I'm seeing a command.php, you know, we're in an internal engagement. This is some in-house app that serves a singular purpose for accessibility. Hmm, you know, interesting, interesting. We'll copy this over. We'll bring this over to Cherry Tree and put this under our files. Um, I'm going to trim this up if need be. That's an extra index.php is a 403 forbidden. And I don't need the dot as the web root. I know pretty much what the web root is. And then let's check out the directories here. CSS, images, we'll just let that go. I see our viewer count and viewership has ticked up consistently um, the past few weeks. Is that common list pinned anywhere? You know, I get so much, so many times. Every It seems like every other day someone asks me that question. And as an instructor and as an educator, I want to encourage you on your free time to make this kind of stuff yourself. I want you to do that because, you know, I may type common, but you may type, you know, something else that comes to your mind. And ultimately, what's going to make you the quickest is not what I drill, you know, into your brain with these bash aliases, but it's going to be personalized. It's going to be to you. It's going to be native. 
Um, and, and that's just why I do it that way. But I will certainly bring this up here if you ever want to pause the video on YouTube when I get it uploaded and bring over manually, you certainly can. There's the full common for anybody who wants it. Just the super quick accessible stuff. Um, not by the furthest stretch of any imagination is that all inclusive. It's just stuff that I got tired of hitting up like over and over and over again. Um, but there you go. If you really want it, you can copy it directly from YouTube. It's like a cheat sheet, so, you know, maybe I maybe I put it up on my blog at sirensecurity.io. You know, I'm not against that. So, uh, maybe. I'll, I'll let you know. Stay tuned on that one, buddy. Stay tuned. Um, why is this not coming back here? Like, all right, you know what? It's CSS. I, I, I don't care. Goodbye, CSS. There we go. And images, quite frankly, nothing really came back there, but I'm going to include CSS and just my own condensed version. We have CSS and images, um, and that's what we got back there. I don't know why I didn't copy correctly. But CSS, uh, images. So what I'm doing here is control shift right arrow. Oops, control shift right arrow. See how that takes it up through the forward slash, up through the special character, up through the special character each time. Super useful for instant highlighting. You know, this combined with the foreground and a return key, and it's done, stapled in. Um, but let's go ahead and copy the IP address. Siren script to copy exploits from search exploit would be super useful. Okay, uh, well, I can learn you something else, bud. So, um, cat slash bin slash bring me it dot shell. Here it is, copying vulnerability to current working directory. Copy user share exploit db exploits, and then dollar sign one is our argument to the current working directory provided by a dot. Echo that it's done and all. However, search exploit um, has its own built in uh, kind of thing. So if you wanted to copy this, right, you just, let's say this Python here, this Windows remote. 4.1, whatever. You just copy it, and you can type search exploit m and paste it, and it's going to copy to your current directory, right? And there it is, 41894.py. So you can, there, either way you want to do that, um, again, just have it from things, functionality that may have not existed in the past. I made my own, uh, but there you go. So hope that helps, and yeah. I hope that answers your question. Um, but other than that, let's copy the IP address and let's begin. I'm going to go ahead and say wfuzz, uh, you know, um, let's say this for the web root is done. And derb, I'm going to drop off this because we've done this here for the web root. Um, and we found, you know, CSS images. Um, what else? Nikto? I mean, I guess we can run a Nikto scan. I'm not against it. X Let's echo the URL, and uh, I'm just going to copy this and re-export it. Copy, and then export URL equal to this. And I'm going to drop the fuzz portion. And then we're going to nikto dash dash host at the target URL dash checks for all. And we can run that in the background. I doubt it's going to find a single solitary thing other than what we've already looked at. But, you know, there it goes. So. Uh, into the browser, alas, and here I can, you'll see, um, I really want more emphasis on the hotkeys I'm using this particular stream. I have cherry tree open. I want to minimize it. That's, uh, you know, command key or windows key H, and that'll hide it. How, can, how nice. And then this comes up, and I can use windows key or command key again, and up arrow, and that'll bring it here. Down arrow to minimize it, left arrow to move it here, right arrow to move it there, etc. That's how I do things so quickly without a uh, cursor all the time. So um, it seems that we're presented with an admin information systems login. Do we have username enumeration? If I type admin here um, and ASDF is the password, no. They don't even, they don't even, there's nothing. What about some form of SQLI? What about admin union, ASDF? Nothing really going on here. Um, so what we're going to do, it's, and there's not even a verbose error message of any kind, no information uh, brought back. Let's check the source loop. Seems like the method is post, so it's post data to login.php, 
pretty typical stuff. Um, I promised you even in the big applications for you know AAA organizations, it's the same premise, the CompuSci premise of post data being sent to some backend processing system is extremely commonplace. So um, let's go ahead and get this in burp suite, do a refresh and see what's sent along, what we have. I'm gonna turn intercept on and refresh. Go back to burp suite. It says that we have a session ID, but I don't really see anything going on there, uh, which is particularly interesting. What if I go here, go to tools, clear browsing data, and let's say basic, all time, cookies, cached images and files, just to make sure. And then we'll reload the page with intercept on. I wanna make sure. Okay, yeah, so there's no, there's no PHP session ID this time around. Particularly interesting. Um, but uh, let's see here, source code, header cookie info, Matica says woohoo, call me Elsa says professional, hacker lady that's banned. I hope not, I hope I'm not banned. Um, so let's continue along. I'm gonna close out of this. What we're gonna do is make a mock-up request. So I'm gonna say freaking admin here and then fuzz me here. And you'll see what I mean. If I hit submit with intercept turned on, it's just useful reference, fuzz me here for the password values. So you can see where that is going. We're gonna right click this whole request and just toss it on over to repeater, toss it on over to intruder. And uh, we're gonna stick out of the repeater for now. I'm gonna drop these special little characters, these special little signs, because I wanna stick. I wanna stick with trying to brute force an admin username um, and remove the fuzz me here. Now, anything in between these special characters is where our payloads will be inserted. Uh, they'll be popped in and popped off, um, so to speak. So we'll go to payloads. I'm going to load up RockU, um, and we'll call this rockyou.txt. There we go. Open. That's in user share wordless rockyou.txt. Now, this is going to take a couple minutes, I'm guessing, to load. Uh, but once it does, we'll be ready to start the attack. I'm just going to read chat for a second. If you want to learn how to do this with Hydra, I am not against it. I'm not against it at all. Um, sniper payload, yes, correct. Pretty standard, pretty standard. Call me Elsa says me next. Did you have something you wanted to say, uh, Elsa? If you had anything you wanted to say, now is the time. Now is the time. Oh, the fuzz me thing. <laughs> I do love my fuzzing capabilities. I like to write little fuzzers um, to fuzz network, TCP IP, um, maybe even like American Fuzzy Lopper, um, but that kind of stuff. Please do not use American Fuzzy Lopper unless you have a machine that you are ready to burn the CPU on. Um, and I mean literally destroy it uh, because that is a disclaimer on their website. It can totally rip your CPU. Um, they're just a heads up on those types of things, but you know, spike is useful sometimes, spike.h, I wouldn't worry about it too much, um, for now at least. What about GoBuster? Same premise, there's nothing different, man, it's TCP, IP, HTTP requests, you know, dropping in payloads at a specific position, and having a word list, it's all very similar stuff here. Um, but we're loading up RockU into the memory here for Burp Suite Professional. And uh, we're going to see how it goes, and then we'll be able to start our attack. Absolutely correct. If you don't have Burp Pro, that's fine. Um, you can still, on this particular machine, you can still use it. But what about the instance that you're not using this machine, you know, targeting this DC4 Delta Charlie for a uh, machine? Well, then you can use Hydra. You can use WFuzz. Um, you can use Zap if you like, uh, pretty much anything you like. There's, there's many free alternatives. Um, why not use Hydra for this instead? Preference. 
I, I've, I realized in uh, my vet for the machine, I realized I've never demonstrated uh, intruder before uh, properly. So I'd like to demonstrate that. So now that we have this loaded up, you can see it's populated our payload list here, payload options, simple list. We're gonna go back here to our positions tab. Note that this is where all of those payloads will be placed, exactly where my cursor is. Then we'll take, uh, we'll click on start attack and give that a moment. I have had issues with this in the past where it just doesn't go, but I am crossing my fingers here. Crossing my fingers. It should pop up a window that starts the attack, but it's a massive word list. So, in the meantime, noob question, is Burp Suite similar to Kali Linux? Those are, uh, Burp Suite is included within Kali Linux. It comes with it. All right, there we go. So this has popped up. The attack is started. And uh, so how are we going to know if we have a success? I want to teach you something. So always, like, when you're utilizing WFuzz, make sure that you're paying attention to the response length and character bytes, right? Make sure that you are paying, yeah, response status is one. But more important than that, man, I really want you to develop an eye for the length the amount of bytes returned from the target web server. Because if there's so much as a difference in the amount of lines, that's why WFuzz is nice. Uh, if there's so much as a difference in the length or the lines, you know something happened. A payload might have done something and it requires manual inspection at that point. Um, what we're gonna do here is see that obviously we have 557 characters. If we sort everything that we've sent thus far by length, um, we should eventually get to something, I think. Let's take a look here. Doo -doo -doo. What about a status? Let's see. Aha! So, clicking on length descending, we have a password. Immediately, I will go to attack and pause that attack. <coughs> now, we have happy with a response length of 618 bytes that came back. That is to say, if I click on the response tab here, we have 618 total, or excuse me, 718 total characters that came back um, in the data there, in the response. So the password happy works. I'm gonna switch back to my terminal, nano users, we're gonna have admin, nano passwords, and we're gonna put in happy. That is a valid credential set. With that being done, I'm gonna turn off uh, Burp Suite's, uh, no, we're gonna discard the attack. Proxy, intercept is off. Switch back to Chromium here, or the built-in browser. We'll type admin and happy. And we should get back that response. Or admin happy. There we go. And Sure enough, we were right. So system tools, it looks like um, you are currently logged in. Um, what does that mean? How do I know I'm logged in to anybody new? I'm gonna turn in intercept and refresh and we'll notice something a little different. This time I have a PHP session ID or a cookie tagged along as a session ID. Um, when we talk about various attacks like um, session writing or something like that, we talk about taking this type of session ID or grabbing it from one various attack or another, and then inserting it. You can do so for every request by going to Options under Proxy, and then you scroll down to Match and Replace. You hit Add, and then you could uh, just type in Replace and paste in your uh, cookie value, like cookie session ID equals, or something like this, you know, and you just paste in that line or whatever session ID value, and the premise is that with every continued request, you could write off of somebody else's session. So that's a little theory there on session writing. Um, but we'll go back to intercept. We'll turn off intercept and forward out any remaining requests. And uh, Maticus says, what? I'm gonna get good with them eventually, maybe. 
Uh, Kami also says admin. Always glad to see that I'm not the only one using nano. Heck yeah, nano, dude. Uh, anybody who says, you know, V over Vim or Nano or whatever, man, just use what you like. Okay, whatever feels natural and fluent. Um, command, so you're currently logged in, run command list files. So we have three options. We can click on this button, click on this button, and click on this button. And that tells me immediately, if I see system level, so, so what do we have here in our takeaway, right? I'm going to bring this over. In our takeaway, if we're logged into an application, these will all be posted in Wireside Text in Discord. Always keep an eye out for Wireside Text because this is where all the fun is regarding the stream or regarding uh, you know, our office hours every Friday. That's where it's going to be. That's where the fun is. Um, but nonetheless, uh, if we're logged into an application and we notice system level output, that is to say, the results of uh, the native web technology, technology performing a system level command and outputting it into the browser, then consider a command injection attack. So this is, this is, when I see this, I just know we have command injection. With the power of burp suite and being able to intercept, kind of play a man in the middle, um, we aren't restricted to just what happens, you know, with our user interface, our UX. We're not restricted to that. We're hackers, man. So we turn on intercept, we list out files, we hit run, and instead of listing out the ls command, um, what we're going to do is send this to repeater, because we may want to do different commands. Um, I'm going to go to repeater. And instead of ls-l, it looks like this is not even hard-coded into the back end. It's just, and even hard-coded would be insecure. But um, ls, you know, plus it for, to account for a space, a dash l. What if I type id and hit send? And then let's look at the output. And sure enough, we have, I'm going to highlight here on the right side, that is in our response panel, uid equals 33 or www data. So that's command injection 101. Uh, being able to receive command or you know perform a command injection attack. If you're doing an internal engagement, you come across a convenient little developer application. It might happen all the time. Then you know uh, where somebody has uh, some kind of system level operation occurring in an administrative interface. Then you know it's it's complete compromise. Put a shell in there. Okay, I like what we're hearing here. So put a shell. I'm going to type rev shells. I'm going to grab a bash reverse shell, um, just copy this. I'm going to type bash dash C and paste it inside here. That is bash dash command apostrophes and uh, this. Then we're going to type 192.168 and come back to me at 1.7 on port 9090. I'm going to copy this and what we're going to do is URL encode it. So I'm going to just do mayor web uh, URL encode and should be able to just go here and control V, encode the value, or URL encode it, hop back to burp suite, and instead of the ID command, I have a fully loaded reverse shell command ready to rock, ready to roll. The only thing we need is a netcat listener on port 9090. So I'll clear this out, blow up the font, netcat dash numerical listen verbose port on 9090. And if I'm correct, when we go back here and hit send, we now have a complete shell on the target machine. Not a complete shell. If I hit TTY, we don't have a TTY. So we need to go ahead and, uh, you know, get a legitimate shell. So I'm going to type breakout. Um, and what we're going to do is just check which Python is that here. Of course it is. Awesome. So type TTY now. Now we have a valid TTY which means that we're not going to run into any hiccups if it comes to system level operations like execution or things like this. But um, yeah, I'm going to export paths to be something like a distro global to work on FreeBSD, you know, CentOS, Debian, whatever it might be, just ready to rock. And export the term. I want some color. So term-256 color. LL is going to be a pretty print uh, kind of thing. It's going to list everything out by sort, uh, sort it by uh, size, uh, display all information, 
in a human readable format and by time and apply color automatically. You'll see if I type LL now, we now have color in this shell to indicate what a directory is and what a file is. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is just scare everybody half to death by dropping it. I hit Control Z. And then what we're going to do is that backgrounds the process. I'm going to type STTY raw dash echo. And we're going to chain that with a semicolon into the FG or foreground command and chain that into the reset. I'll press, press return twice. And now if we hit Control C, if you're a native terminal, I want to know this will only work if your native local attacking machine has bash as the default shell. This does not work with Z shell. Does not work. I'm going to export some columns and rows. And ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to rock. We have a complete shell that is stable. Yes, B. Blanco, a stabilized shell. Um, Alfred says bling bling. Indeed, my friend. Indeed, indeed. So um, with that all being said, wowzers, such organization, I promise you it just comes with time. Um, what do we do now, guys? It's post-exploitation phases. I want something other than Lenpeace. Something other than Lenpeace, please. I want anything. Okay, who am I? www.data. I could run through this in two minutes, but I want you guys to, you know, you know, commit it to memory. PS dash EF. I don't know why dash EF. I mean, what if we do PS AUX for all, grep dash I for root, because we want vertical escalation, apply color to anywhere we find root. And now we have a list of things here. Uh, we'll check down through these brackets. System journal D. I see you, Dev. Depends if it's outdated there. PHP. 7.0, uh, or PHP FPM, the master process there. Uh, cron is running, or it's able to be ran, uh, and SSH. So SSH we didn't really even need. We didn't really even need that. And sudo-l will not work because we're not a valid user. We're not a valid uh, system level user. If I cat Etsy password, um, you'll notice that for www data we have user sbin no login permitted no login for this particular user so we're we're kind of like an invalid user um, and Jim and Sam uh, both if we could sshn as them we would be able to to do that because they execute out of home Jim or land in home Jim home Sam and their native shell will be bash if we were to do that. What else can we say? You name, okay? You name dash A. So let's go ahead and grab this. You know, this is back burner information. Um, but if I bring out this here, I already have a note ready to go for post enum. Um, back burner stuff. So if we're going to get compilation out of the way, that's what this individual is thinking. Cat Etsy issue. Cat Etsy. Asterisk dash release. Um, and it looks like it's DBNG new Linux 9. Um, and it is stretch. Okay, cool. So I'm going to highlight all of this. And if we need to come back to it, actually, I'm going to run file bin bash to get that architecture. And if we did need to compile, having an uh, inspection of a binary that pre is pre existing and native to our victim machine will be useful information. That's why I run file on that. So we just know exactly how to compile. That's an ELF 32 bit LSB executable. Standard, standard, uh, Debian again. Uh, we have version 9, and it looks like Stretch as well. And then, of course, above all, we have the Linux kernel version as DC4 4.90 through 3, through 683, but 4.9.x if we were going to go for a kernel payload. But we're not. Uh, do we have compilation capability? Yeah. So, yes. Uh, do we have CC? Yes, we do. We already know we have Python. Do we have Perl? And yes, we have Perl. So whenever we're ready, if we wanted to do kernel payloads, we're kind of locked and loaded with everything just, you know, it's, it's all there. You know what I mean? It's all there. Um, drink water, stay hydrated. You're totally right. Totally right. Ah. <sighs> 
Thank you. Hydrated, hydrated, hydrated. Um, <clears throat> so um, we have everything we need there. Now I'm just going to kind of run through uh, some stuff. This is how I would enumerate, right? I came in. Uh, let's check out the www dc4. Uh, it doesn't look like much is in there. That's fine. Let's check out home. Uh, I see Sam, Charles, and Jim. Sam, uh, bash logout, cat.bash logout. And nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, what about Charles? Bash logout again, nothing out of the ordinary. Jim. And it looks like we have a suid on test.shell. Um, it also looks like we have a backups directory which contains old passwords.back. So I'm just going to copy everything here. These are old passwords. If we really wanted to, we could start Hydra, you know, and uh, from the outside and attempt to get a valid SSH session. So I'm going to hit Control Shift O to open a new terminal. And I'm going to uh, we'll touch pass, we'll, we'll nano our passwords um, to include happy and everything after this. As valid passwords, we'll type Hydra. Uh, let's actually, uh, yeah, Hydra dash L as users. Um, and oh, we're going to need to edit the users as LS LSA home. We have uh, not admin, but Charles, Jim, and Sam. So we'll Hydra dash L users while we're doing our enumeration. You know, can we land a valid shell with somebody else? Let's try those passwords out dash P passwords. And over SSH protocol at 192.168, for me it is one, uh, what was it, 160. Um, and we'll just kind of let that rock and roll. I'm going to bring that down because that is on the back burner. We'll see if it shakes loose on anything. Yeah? Cool, cool. Um, now, while that's running, let's go ahead and check the Etsy directory. Is anything in here not root root or root shadow? That is to say, did another user come in? Uh, that was not root root or root shadow. And did they do anything funky? Uh, LSA, LS dash LSA, all. So we want to look for any dot secret files, dot secrets, because they contain secrets. Um, I don't think that would actually be like asterisk dot secret. Grep dash I dot secret. It's been a long day. There we go. Nothing there. LS LSA on Etsy password. Uh, can we write to it? It doesn't look like we have write permissions um, to that. That's okay. Um, let's go ahead and check out the network. Are there any neighboring machines? Anything off of like 172.x.x.x? You know, uh, are these video sessions available for later? Uh, oh my God, Zilla. Absolutely, buddy. You can head over to YouTube, type in offensive security to find our official YouTube channel. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to it because I will be uploading this entire recording uh, to YouTube after this session. Um, I don't know if Falcon Spy is still here, but I'm going to go ahead and grab that for you guys. YouTube.com. And let's type in offensive security. And let's click on videos. And I'll link you straight to it. There you go. Offensive security training. Thank you, call me Elsa. Appreciate it. Let's check out the network. Netstat dash antop. Or netstat's not found. Uh, do we have SS? We do. So we can use SS dash ton LP. And it looks like we have 127001 with 25. So mail is here. And that's looking promising. I like that. That means, you know, there may have been some mail sent around between these users left behind. Um, so that's cool. Let's check out, in fact, <laughs> with that being said, let's go ahead and check out their mail, see if there's anything here. We do have one for Jim, um, but, you know, permission is denied on that. So we can't necessarily read that yet. Let's take a look at our brute forcing. Um, and see if anything comes back. Nothing yet so far, but what we're gonna do is type uh, Linux post, and this guide is posted on my website. You can go to sirensecurity.io and you'll find pretty much the same guide. Um, but 
checking for suets, checking for guids. And it looks like we do have a set user ID on home gem test. So let's go to home gem. And does anybody have any idea what we might be able to do in this particular scenario? Any idea? Let's go ahead and run the file and see what happens. Oh, we got a valid one back for a real user. Nice. So I'm just going to drop netcat altogether. I have a, a script called killname. I'll cat bin for anybody who likes my scripts and my aliases. Killname.shell. This basically, through all processes, anything, it's a kill all attached with a dash nine uh, to our argument. So if Firefox, Chrome, Cherry Tree, SSH, Netcat. If you want to immediately drop the process, I can just type kill name Netcat and bada boom, bada bing, it is done. Pretty cool, huh? So we have a valid cred. I'm going to touch creds. We're going to nano creds. And I'm going to say for Jim, we have, well, Jabril04, just in case there's any special characters. Control X and Y and enter to save that out. Cat creds. Let's SSH as Jim at the target IP. At IP. And yes. And what password? Jabril04. And we are now in. Excellent. So what is something that we didn't have access to before that we might be able to have access to now? Anything. Anything anything at all. Poor gem indeed. Mail, I like it. So let's go to var mail. Cat gem. And hi gem, I'm heading off on the holidays at the end of today. So the boss asked me to give you my password just in case anything goes wrong. Here's the password it looks like for Charles. That's very kind of you, Charles. <clears throat> so we'll switch user to Charles and uh, compromise his account. Um, I'm just going to export this here. Let's see if while we're at it, can we do any pseudoing? We can. So we have user bin tehe. Now, I know the escalation for this I, uh, because tehe is kind of like an editor. Uh, it's from T, if anybody's familiar with the T editor. Uh, but what we can do is go to sirensecurity.io. This is not shameless self-promotion. It is actually just the quickest way that I can demonstrate. Um, if we just go to Linux Privilege Escalation Resources, and then let's see. Well, you know what? Let's do a little exploration, right? That's, we only got one valid cred set back. Little exploration. What happens if we run uh, tehe? T sudo uh, user bin tehe. ASDF. Anything happening? Ah, everything is duplicated. If I control D that didn't do anything. What if we sudo user bin tehe um, and output that to file? Permission denied. Um, okay, let's take a look at the help file for this. User bin tehe dash dash help. Okay, a few things. Uh, dash dash append. Append to the given files do not overwrite. Um, ignore interrupt signals, but append to the given file. Okay, so I'm pretty sure what we need to end up doing is an overwrite on the Etsy password. And what we're going to do is go back here. Do, 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 do. Um, I heart hacking. And let's find it. There we go. So the premise here is that we're going to write out our own user. If I go back to my attacking machine, right? And I type, let's go back to our attacking machine, open SSL, um, and then we hit PASSWD, and what is it, dash one? Fonts. Um, and I say, I heart hacking, verifying password, I heart hacking, it will generate the correct hash, right? So what we've done is we've inserted that hash. Uh, as a valid user uh, 
combination for Etsy password. Similar to, well, that's no actual users there. Here we go, on the attacking or target machine. Cat Etsy password, we have Jim and Sam. So we wanna kind of replicate this structure, right? We have Jim, a hashed password, user and Charles, actually we'll start with Charles because that's native is 1001. Hash password, user 1001, group 1001, name is Charles, landing location, starting location, and the environment will be to home Charles, and the starting shell will be Ben Bash. So we're gonna do something similar, but insert our own uh, with that T he dash dash help with the help of the append functionality for T he. So what we're gonna do is go here and I'm just gonna copy a pre-existing everything pretty much inside these quotes, copy that, everything, see how I've excluded those apostrophes. I'm gonna uh, do that on my own. Uh, what we're gonna do is sudo dash L and sudo T he dash A on forward slash Etsy password. So what I'm saying is whatever we end up putting in here and escaping out of, I wanna append that, almost the equivalent of two right arrows to a file, piping out two right arrows, which means append as opposed to overwrite. If we overwrite, that'd be bad news. So we wanna append to Etsy password, and then with the user copied to our clipboard, we will control shift V to paste it, return key and hit control D to exit that. We'll confirm that that's actually been placed there by catting the Etsy password file. And sure enough, there's our user. Excellent. So we'll switch user to Siren. The password is I heart hacking, and we are now root on the target machine. That's it. That is, that is just it. Let's go to root. Um, and it looks like we have a flag.txt, obviously, you know, bling bling, the real deal, mind blown, uh, geez, bling bling, holy cow, awesome. Yes, uh, that is the kind of stuff we will teach you here at Offensive Security, and that is the tip. I promise the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Um, so that is how we do things. Nonetheless, um, well done, congratulations, hope you enjoyed DC4. Just wanted to send a big thanks out there to all those who provided feedback and those who've taken the time to complete these little challenges. Um, if this was an actual engagement, you'd uh, you know, type if config to provide, well, that's not available um, unless it is, and we have to export our paths. Clear this out, and if config, still not there. Um, that's kind, kind of them, but we can do an IPA. Um, that'll work too. And what we can do is hostname ID to validate our authority and privilege over the machine. Shift print screen to print out this and snap, done. So again, cat Etsy password, grep dash i siren. And there we are, that's how we got root. So before I conclude the stream, let's head on over to offensivesecurity.com and uh, see if there's anything new on the landing page. I don't think there is. Um, yep, still our Learn One, Learn Unlimited, all of our courses down here. Um, I'm very much interested in you know the web courses. I'm a content developer here for offensive security and also uh, some of the pen. But other than that, our brand new courses are the Web 200 and the SOC 200. Let's check out forward slash events and see what's going on. And doo -doo -doo -doo. it looks like we have preparing for the OSCP exam with AD exam sets, Jeremy Miller, Harbinger, the content product manager, and John uh, Michael Mankow, student mentor. He's one of our student mentors. We actually have kind of made the bridge from uh, calling our colleagues, our student administrators, instead of calling them student admins, they are now called student mentors. Um, and AD is not the new nightmare. No, it is not the new nightmare. Guys, we've been, people are like, oh, OFSEC just added AD, uh, maybe more towards the exam, but dude, these concepts, if I can speak truthfully, they have been around for anybody who wanted to play around in the environment and the demilitarized zone, 
these these concepts have been there. Um, we're just bringing more attention to it, I guess, nowadays. Um, but nonetheless, um, thank you guys all for your feedback. Thank you for absolutely everything that you do. Thank you for the positive feedback, even the negative feedback, the criticism. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, anything that you guys say to me, you know, I will try to make this much better. Of course, of course. Thank you guys very much. You guys, this community means everything to me. I, I, like I said earlier, offensive security took me down a road. Okay, it took me down a road many years ago, and I developed a methodology out of that. If I can help you guys in a manner that I know is successful, um, then I will definitely do so. And that's why I'm so privileged to be here. And I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. So with that being said, thank you all for being here. We will be here next week with the new office hours um, and another stream at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's about it, though. So everybody take care and happy hacking, intruders.